powering a home network, powering a home lab. How do you do this thing? Do you just grab a whole bunch of power boards and just plug everything in there and hope for the best and that's the best way to power it? What about getting like a UPS, something that is uninterrupted power? What about getting a PDU, a power distribution unit? What about generators? What about, well, I mean, there's other things that you could do potentially as well. What is the best way to sort of power a home lab? I mean, a home lab is gonna contain a whole bunch of stuff. A home lab, of course, is that space for you to learn, for you to build servers, to play with networking technologies, and then all of this stuff needs to be powered and connected somehow. You may have some stuff laying around. Some of these may require you to go and spend a bit of cash, really depending on what your needs and requirements are. But before we do cover this, are you tired of feeling like a tech superhero? You're coming into the rescue, you're doing everything by yourself, you don't have a sidekick to help you out on all of these tech issues. You're perfect tech companion is Pulseway. From servers to workstations, networks to applications, Pulseway lets you actually monitor it all from a single dashboard. It makes it extremely easy. It's essentially like having X-ray vision to your entire IT infrastructure. And Pulseway unleashes your inner superhero with real-time alerts directly to your smartphone or tablet. And this is something that I absolutely love. I don't need to log into my computer. I can just pick up my iPhone and see exactly what is going on right Right in there. Essentially swooping in, troubleshooting and saving the day all from the palm of your hand wherever you are. But it can do so much more than just that. You can even deploy patches. You can deploy software across your entire network. As long as the device is set up with Pulseway, you can remotely deploy things everywhere. Remote into any workstation, any system, on the go, from your desktop, from your phone, you can automate the whole lot and you can even run powerful reports to show off your work and see exactly what is going on. So my fellow IT heroes, you now have a sidekick in the show notes down below of this video. Click on that link to go check out Pulseway. Save the day as you always do for all of your users and the business. Home lab and power. What should you be doing? What should you be looking at? There's a few different sorts of options that are available for you around power. You've got to think about your power consumption. You've got to think about cost saving. You've got to think about energy efficiency. Think about smart power strips. Configure things in the BIOS. There's a whole bunch of things that you could be doing to improve your power. Because ultimately, here's the thing, right? A company that has all of their racks set up, the company pays for this. But at home, if it's your home, somebody's going to pay the bill. You get the electricity bill every single month and it can be quite costly. So you've got to make sure that uh, your home lab is not too crazy that it's going to cost you a lot of money. And this is something that you've got to think about when you are designing your home lab. Think about the tech that's inside of your home lab. If you've got some servers, if you've got a switch, a router, a firewall, you've got a storage device like a SAN or a NAS, all of these things need to be powered into something. The reality is some of these things can run quite hot. If you've got like a fully fledged rack server, I mean, you don't have to have something like that in every single home lab, but if you've got something like a big thing, the fans are gonna be going crazy. The heat is gonna be pretty full on. If you've got a tower computer that's got a lot of grunt, maybe like a gaming machine or something that you can use for development, you're gonna need a bit more resources, which means the unit is gonna require a lot more grunt and it's gonna be consuming more energy. So have a think about all of the equipment in your home lab and actually whether you need all of that stuff turned on all the time. Because it is a home lab, right? It's gonna be used for your learning, your testing. You may not have to have it on all the time. If you're not using it, turn it off. If you'd have some virtual machines that are not being used, turn them off. Why have them on if you're not gonna be using them? And then when you need to go and actually do something, you then power them on. You can get like these little meters, these little like watt meters or power consumption meters. We can actually run all the devices into this little box and it'll tell you how much energy it's using. What I've actually got is in my little uh, electrical box, like a little Bluetooth connection, and I can actually see live how much energy is being consumed. So I can switch my lab on and go, whoa, that's going up really high, switch it off and then it goes down. In my home lab right here, I've got several things. I've got my switches, then I've got a few little smaller computers. These are like micro and mini computers. There's all shapes, all sizes, some requiring more power than others, my NAS devices, I've got a Synology NAS, 
I've then got this other Terra Master NAS, and then I've got some more rack based type of servers. I mean, the first thing that you could probably do is you could just run all that straight into the wall. If you've got enough power points on the wall, you're gonna have power boards. You're gonna plug it all into your power boards and then plug it into the switch in the side of your wall. Here's some stuff you've got to think about. Cheap power boards are cheap. They're not really to the standard that uh, you'd expect for something that's a little bit more corporate -y. Some home labs can get pretty big and pretty crazy where it sort of crosses over from home to a bit more corporate, which means you're gonna need a little bit more grunt. Whatever you do though, is don't daisy chain them. Don't plug in one power board to another power board to another power board. Don't ever do that, right? That's just like the worst thing ever. But here's a little bonus tip. In a workplace, in a company, if you're responsible for looking after stuff in a comms room in a data center, never use these cheapo power boards. From the cheapo power boards, you run into ones that have actually got some surge protection stuff. They're a little bit more expensive and they will be able to protect your equipment and they just work a little bit better. If you then want to get a little bit more corporate -y, you then move to what's called a PDU, a power distribution unit. And these can be set up in a myriad of ways. I mean, you can put them at the very top, down the very bottom of your rack. You can put more than one. You can actually put them on the left and on the right. And this is something that's really, really nice is when you're setting up a home lab, if you're trying to mimic a company's rack, for example, you may actually want to go for left and right power, where you may have a device that has two powers, right? Because a lot of devices that are more corporate have two powers because they want redundancy, high availability. You want to make sure that if one of the powers fails, you don't actually lose that piece of device because uh, you need that thing to be operational. So you have two powers. And what you could do is you could set up one power going to the left side, one power going to the right side to the PDUs, and then those then run into the mains in your house, for example. But what I love is the use of a UPS, an uninterrupted power supply. The one that I've got right here is a rack-based UPS. So it's like a long one, it's a rack-based one. And inside of a UPS, it's just a whole bunch of batteries. You plug in all of your equipment into that, into the back of the UPS, there's all of your plugs and you run it into there. And then your UPS then runs into your mains power. And then what happens is if your power gets cut, the UPS kicks in and gives you some power to be able to run all of your equipment. Your equipment will not even know that there's been a power outage. I love that on the UPS itself, you can see exactly how much load, what your input and your output load is. And you can also see how much battery you will get when you do have a power outage so that your entire lab can stay operational in the event of a power outage. Now, I didn't have this when I first built my rack and you may be thinking to yourself, self, do I actually need a UPS? If you're intending to power the thing down from time to time, you may be fine. But then, you know, what gets really, really annoying and this has happened to me several times. Well, you've got your gear running. You know, I had a domain controller running. I've got my NAS that is housing a whole bunch of stuff out on my network. All of my virtual machines, all of my data, all of my media is all stored on there. And then there's a little spike in the power or the neighborhood loses some power. Even if there's just a little blip for like a second, that gear would go down and then it will reboot. Sometimes it wouldn't reboot. It can get damaged. So if you're gonna be keeping your stuff running, it may be worthwhile investing in a UPS. And look, ultimately UPS is not there to give you unlimited power. Eventually it's gonna run out because it is a battery. Sometimes it's good to invest in a little UPS to make sure that the power stays up. Now the last thing that we'll cover is generators. Essentially another form of backup power. Now this is not gonna be as common in a home like it could be, but you generally will have different phases coming into a workplace. So in a building, for example, you've got your comms room, you've got your server room, you've got your data center. Into that room, you may actually have different phases of power that come in. One phase goes to some power, one phase goes to a different set of power. In a home, there are probably gonna be multiple phases, but they're more spread around your house rather than all in the one room. If you do wanna get very fancy, you could get an electrician to come out to your place and actually get them to set up multiple phases for your home lab, where if you are gonna be splitting up your power left and right and you want different infrastructure to run into different sorts of power, you can have them set up one power point to be on one phase and another power point to be on another phase. Now. Ultimately, you are then dependent still on the grid, on the electrical grid in your neighborhood, in the place where you live, where if the UPS eventually runs out of power, 
you've got no other option other than providing your own backup method. And this is where you can go and invest a bit more cash to get something like a generator, a separate source of power. A Tesla wall would be one perfect example where you can run all your power into that and then that contains a whole bunch of batteries or a generator that you can fill up with fuel and then you can really keep that running as long as you need to. As long as you've got charge on batteries, if you're using a battery supply or if you've got enough fuel running into something like a generator. So of course this stuff is not going to be cheap so you need to take that into consideration. Let us know down below what are you actually doing to power your home network and check out some of my other videos on tech as well. I love the home lab, I love technology in general so go and check those out. We'll see you then.